Here in the United States, we're currently experiencing what they're calling some kind of Arctic blast. Uh, I don't really pay attention to the weather. I don't, I don't know exactly what that means. But what I do know is uh, apparently 80% of the country is below zero. And I'm just hanging out here in the Midwest living in a camper. Lowest I've seen so far is right around zero, but uh, here in a couple days, uh, we're going to get below zero. I figured this is a great opportunity to share what it's like living in a pull-behind camper in an, in an Arctic blast. So let me share a couple things with you. One of the very first things I did when I moved into this camper is I took out the table and I replaced it with my sit-stand desk. So clearly this is where I'm spending the majority of my time. Here is the issue. My camper is not insulated on the floor at all. Now I've done something on the outside, which I'll share in a moment, which helps with that. But you know what helps even more? It required adding a couple extra outlets in here, but getting a, an infrared electric heater down by my feet. That makes a world of difference. Uh, I started this winter out, winter out with um, occasional numb toes from the cold. This was a massive help with that. Basically, each one of these quartz tubes is a 300 watt element. I really only run one. I, I very rarely find the need to, to go to two. And in this last cold snap we had, uh, I never did. It's been fine. Two actually kind of roasts my legs too much, so... Leaving it on three, it's been fantastic. It's not really an easy way for me to show you these. The, these are just two 500 watt, just resistive load uh, electric heaters. They're, they're Amazon basic brands. They're really cheap. I think they're like 25 bucks a piece, maybe 20. They're just not a big deal. Now, instead of using just one big heater, I, I use a combination of these two and the infrared. I find that because this is such a small space, the granularity control of being able to choose between 500, 1,000, or 1,300, or 1,600 watts of heat is a, is a pretty big deal. Now, most of the time, I'm only running the 300 watt IR and a 500 watt resistive. And that gives a nice base level until I don't know, probably right around the 35 degree mark. And then I kick in the furnace. Go ahead and zoom in on the furnace here. You can see that uh, while there is a thermometer at the bottom, you can't just set it for 60 degrees or 70 degrees. It's such a small area in an RV that you really need to fine tune this and take this cover off and you, you need to set this dial, I forget exactly what it's called, but you need to fine tune this dial on the inside to get the furnace to you know properly respond to temperature fluctuations inside your camper. I can't just say, oh, set it here and you'll be fine because it'll change based off of the amount of volume of air or uh, the square footage of your camper and that sort of thing. So you're going to have to get familiar with your thermostat. That is a must. One of the biggest problems I've actually had heating in the winter has actually been with the gas furnace. Now this is a brand new trailer. This is literally a current year model trailer. Um, I keep having an issue where my furnace will go into sort of this, uh, basically it just starts to go into this uh, infinite loop and then it eventually just stops doing whatever it's doing and then the fan, yeah, I'm not going to describe what the problem is. It's it's irrelevant to this video. Furnace is giving me problems. It's not reliable. The, the, the lesson here is, at least for me, is make sure you have multiple sources of heat. Honestly, I would probably use electric as my primary source of heat if there was enough capacity here. Uh, this is a 30 amp hookup trailer, but I'm only actually running on 15 amps and I'm using a like 250 foot of extension cord to, to do that and it's only 12 gauge wire. So there is quite a bit of voltage drop at this distance so I don't feel comfortable using any more electric heat than I, than I already am. I could probably get away with running all these electric heaters maxed out, but I, I just, I'm not. For me, having two different sources of heat has been pretty important because as you'll see later on there's a ton of heat loss in this trailer. This is going to be one of those things that's really hard for me to show you but if you look right in the sill you can see there's a, some what looks to be water and well that is that is water. Because these are single plane, single pane glass windows, condensation is a real problem when it gets cold. These windows will damn near frost over. You know, when it gets to be right around zero, it's a pretty big issue. Uh, it does it on this window too. You'll also notice that I actually have this window cracked and that's because to get my internet in here, I've got, um, I'll ignore this one, but this is Starlink. I have to have the window cracked to get the wires in here, which I don't have a problem with that because I, I like having a constant 
uh, flow of fresh air. Okay, now this might be the number one most important lesson I learned while living in a camper when it gets when it starts to get cold. You need to have a fan running. If you don't have airflow in your camper, you're gonna find condensation on everything. You don't even need a fan this big, just a little bit. This fan is on the lowest possible setting and the way it's blowing, it's circulating the entire camper. Oh, wow, the difference it makes. This is a necessity. I will never not have a fan running in here. You'll find condensate, you'll have your, your windows will be completely frosted, every glossy surface in your camper will have condensation on it. It becomes a very big problem. Just having a little bit of airflow almost completely solves that problem. Another thing I do is obviously my camper has been winterized. There's no water in any of the pipes or anything like that. So uh, the bathroom isn't going to be used. I'm not going to use any. It's just storage right now. And because it's just storage, I mean, why would I bother leaving the door open and heating it? I mean, there's a skylight back there, which might be covered in frost right now because of this, but it's fine. I leave the door shut. I do not want to heat any more of this camper than I have to. And when I leave this door shut, there's usually like a 20 degree difference between out here and in there. It, even though there's uh, airflow here and there's a gap at the bottom, it does make a pretty noticeable difference. So as far as I'm concerned, if that room's colder, then that's less I'm spending on heating this, this main area here. That being said, this is probably a great opportunity to talk about the skylights in here. There's two of them. There's one main one here, and then there's one in the back. I mean, I call them skylights, but they're the ones that um, some some campers, you know, the fancy ones, they have fans up here. But um, this one has a little twist thing here that I can open up and I can, you know, vent the place out and that sort of thing. It's just a thin piece of plastic. That's the only thing that separates the inside from the outside. And this also gives you a really good opportunity to see just how thick the roof is. It's like six inches, which isn't terrible, but it's still not great. The walls, they're like two inches. There really is not a lot of insulation in here. Today we've actually had a bit of a warm up. It's uh, it's about 17 degrees outside. And you can see it's uh, 66 in here. Now I can comfortably keep this at 70 plus. I'm really not trying. I've had uh, the, the propane furnace off now. Like I've actually turned it off for I don't know, maybe a half hour or so, and I only have, um, actually, I don't even have one of these heaters on. The only heat source I have right now is just 300 watts of infrared. So it holds temperature fairly well, and a big part of that is just thermal mass. You know, I've got a bunch of stuff in storage right there, This, the, the chair, the all the storage here. Like, all this is a thermal mass, so it, the temperature does not fluctuate that much in here. We're outside now taking a look at the camper and you can see that there's a bunch of ice building up right here. You can actually see that uh, some of it's dripping. I'm going to try not to make the shadow an issue here, but this I try to knock off every day and it just keeps coming back. There's no way I could open my awning right now. And then it goes all the way down. You can see, uh, I'll go ahead and zoom in right here. All that is ice. Same thing on the other side of the front, ton of ice. And on the front of the camper, I've uh, removed the 20 pound in favor of a 40 pound. You can see that you can see the level in there and it's, it's frosting up again. It's still functioning fine. I'm convinced that I'm not experiencing any vaporization issues, but look at how much ice uh, I'm having a hard time, not creating a shadow here, but that's like, I don't know, two inches of, of solid ice. Look at, look at all the icicles. I am really losing a ton of heat on the back side of here. I'm actually worried that uh, it's going to create an issue and maybe I'm going to have some kind of water ingress because it keeps building up on the air conditioning unit on the back side anyhow. And then the same story here, a ton of ice. This is all a solid block of ice just because of how much melting has been going on. And uh, when I first realized the backside was a problem, I came back here and I busted all the ice off, but it was damn near glazed the whole way. I keep removing ice just to hopefully alleviate any sort of issues I may or may not have. You can also see all the way around the outside, I've put straw bales under the camper and the snow has sort of acted like a seal. And that has been a pretty, pretty helpful thing to do. Uh, 
Is it, is it a good idea? I, I don't know. I, I don't want us to call this a good idea because it's probably creating a really moist environment under there. I could create a, a unnecessary rust on the, fr on the frame. Um, I could have a bunch of mice living under there. Like this is probably not the best thing to do, but as far as saving heat, it has made a world of difference. I should also say, I don't think the furnace issue I'm running into is a vaporization issue because uh, when we had that really, really low temperature, when it was like six or five degrees out, I don't remember exactly how low it got, but it was like low single digits. I had the furnace running for like 10 minutes nonstop, no issues. During that 10 minutes, I had both burners on the stove running as well, just to try to burn as much propane vapor as I possibly can to see if it would choke out the, the, the furnace, to see if I'd run into any issues. And I did only run it for 10 minutes and you know, I'm no propane expert, but it seems like that probably would have killed it. But then again, I don't know. But then again, I had the issue when it was substantially warmer, so I don't know. My experiences with equipment and appliances and campers is that they're really only designed to be used, I don't know, a couple weeks out of the year. They're not really meant to be a full-time dwelling. In my mind, trusting any of this stuff in here to function 100% of the time, or at least have the same reliability as like a, as a furnace you'd put in the house, is just asinine. I would never do that. I really, really would want to have two, uh, two power sources, two kinds of heat, at least, and at least in a camper like this, if I'm going to live in it. Because, yeah, I mean, well, the temperature is pretty stable right now, but uh, give it three hours and it it'll start cooling off and. Uh, I don't like freezing, so. At this point, I'm just a couple days away from experiencing the lowest temperatures I've experienced in this camper yet. Uh, like negative five or so is what they're predicting. If I have any issues, uh, I'll put it up right here. It got down to negative four and everything was fine. Okay then. I don't anticipate having any issues because I haven't had any had any real issues yet. I'm ha It's fine. I'm living in a camper. It's winter, it's cold, there's a lot of ice. You know, it's not, this isn't something where you can just hands off and relax. I mean, there's, there's a real learning curve to this, but honestly, living in a camper is through the winter, at least through the temperatures that I've experienced, and probably a bit lower, I don't know, another 10, 15 degrees lower. It's fine. It's really, it's fine. I'm not, I'm not having too many problems. I'm comfortable. Oh, yes. No, no. I have had one major issue because I'm losing so much heat. The, the heaters have to be on such a high level, and this is such a small area, that it gets really, really dry in here. <laughs> like, really dry. I think right, it says right now that it's 33% humidity, but I've seen it as low as almost 20%. And as somebody with asthma and uh, some, some skin issues, having that really dry air creates problems for me. So before I go to bed, I will soak this rag right here. You might have noticed it in front of the fan or not. And uh, I'll just let the fan evaporate uh, water into the air. And before I go to bed, I'll also just kind of splash water on the floor. And by the time I get up, it's all completely evaporated and I'll be like 37, 36, somewhere around there, percent humidity. And it, it's mostly fine. Again, you just... <sighs> It's just a different way of living, but you adapt. It's fine. Really, it's fine. Everything's been fine. <laughs> it's not really a big deal. You just adapt. So, with that being said, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. We'll see you later.